Movie lovers, welcome back to another episode of our channel. Get ready for a thrilling ride as we revisit one of the all-time classic World War II movies. Inglorious Bastards is a gripping tale of drama and vengeance set amidst the chaos of war. I hope you're ready for an unforgettable experience. Chapter 1, Once Upon a Time In Nazi-occupied France The movie starts in 1941. Waffen SS Detective Colonel Hans Landa visits French dairy farmer Perrier Lapidite. After chatting in French and drinking Lapidite's excellent milk, Landa says he's fatigued and requests English. Landa then states in English that his files show that all Jewish families in Lapidite's territory have been found save the Dreyfuses, who disappeared a year ago. Landa thinks they're well hidden. After babbling about his reasons for hunting Jews, he admits, he must examine Lapidite's house. Landa coerces Lapidite into confessing that he is sheltering the Dreyfuses under the floorboards by hinting about leaving his family alone in the future. Lapidite locates the Dreyfuses. Landa says Lapidite he will speak French again because the Dreyfuses don't know English. He praises Lapidite for the milk and hospitality in French, opens the door, and Wehrmacht men enter and take positions. The soldiers shoot the Dreyfuses and the floorboards under Landa's orders. Landa hears a noise and sees teenage Shosanna, Melanie Laron, rushing into the hills. Au revoir, Shosanna. Landa shouts after her. Inglorious Bastards. Three years later, in 1944, before the Allied invasion of France, the second story begins. Redneck Lieutenant Aldo Rain, Brad Pitt, addresses his newly formed eight-man Jewish-American commando unit. He tells them, drill sergeant style, that they will be dropped beyond German lines to wreak havoc to all Nazi soldiers they encounter to instill fear in the enemy. He tells them that military norms will not apply because the Nazis have no humanity and deserve none. He says he has Apache blood and that each of his men owes him 100 Nazi scalps. Next, Hitler, Martin Wutke, rages at two of his military commanders for failing to deal with the bastards, who demoralize his troops. Hitler then interviews Private Butts, Zunka Moring, the sole survivor of a bastard ambush that killed his entire platoon. Butts shows Hitler his forehead swastika when Hitler asks if they marked him like the other survivors. In flashback, Butts, Sergeant Werner Ratman, Richard Sommel, and a third soldier are the only survivors. Rain forces Ratman to reveal the whereabouts of a nearby Nazi patrol or he will kill him. Sergeant Donny Donowitz, Eli Roth, known to German soldiers as the Bear Jew, beats Ratman to death with a baseball bat, delighting the bastards. Excitedly, the second survivor is shot dead. Rain then questions Private Butts, Corporal Willem Wicke, Jadeon Burkhard, interprets. After giving the bastards everything they need, Lieutenant Rain lets Private Butts go, but not before carving a swastika into his forehead with his customized Bowie knife, Lieutenant Rain's trademark. Donowitz tells Rain he's getting skilled at carving swastikas as the action concludes. Practice, Lieutenant Rain says. German Night in Paris June 1, 1944, Shosana becomes Emmanuel Mamu without explanation. She owns a downtown Paris theater that Frederick Soler, Daniel Brühl, a spotlight-hungry sniper-turned-actor whose exploits are being honored in the Nazi propaganda film Stoll's Dare Nation, Nation's Pride, chooses for the film premiere. He is in love with Shosana and encourages Joseph Goebbels, Sylvester Groth, to hold the premiere in her cinema. Shosana doesn't share Zoller's feelings. Shosana realizes that so many high-ranking Nazi leaders and officers present a great opportunity for retaliation. She and her lover-slash-assistant Marcel re-edit the fourth reel of Stoll's Dare Nation to burn down the cinema during the premiere using the massive amounts of flammable nitrate film she keeps in storage because it burns three times faster than paper and is cheaper than buying lots of explosives, the English narrator, Samuel L. Jackson, tells us that you couldn't even take a reel on a bus. Operation Kino The British have also learned of the Nazi leadership's plan to attend the premiere and send Lieutenant Archie Hickox, Michael Fassbender, to Paris to lead Operation Kino, an attack on the cinema with the bastards and a German double agent, actress Bridget von Hammersmark. Diane Kruger Hickox meets General Ed Fenich, Mike Myers, and Winston Churchill, Rod Taylor, and is picked for the assignment because to his knowledge of German filmmakers. Bridget von Hammersmark meets Hickox and two bastards, Wiki and the psychotic Hugo Stiglitz, Till Schweiger, who defected from the Germans after killing 13 Gestapo in violent ways, 
some of which can be seen in Chapter 2, in the basement of a French tavern de plan. The only problem is that a German staff sergeant called Wilhelm, Alexander Felling, is celebrating the birth of his kid with his soldiers on the rendezvous night. The tavern's SS major, Dieter Hellström, August Diel, who we met in Chapter 3, also recognizes Hickox's odd accent. Although Hickox is fluent in German, he is using his British accent. Hellström plays a round of guessing with Hickox and von Hammersmark using his card, King Kong. He buys beverages for the table. Unfortunately, Hickox betrays himself by ordering whiskey with his ring, middle, and pointer fingers instead of his thumb, pointer, and middle fingers, and the SS officer discovers their lie. Hickox, Wiki, Stiglitz, all the Germans, and the French bar owner die in the 15-second gunfight when Stiglitz tells Hellström to say out feeders aimed of his Nazi balls and shoots him in the crotch. Hellström then shoots Hickox and hits Bridget in her right thigh, who falls backward in her chair while Hickox fires back at Hellström. Stiglitz rises and repeatedly stabs Hellström in the back of the head, pinning him to the table. Wiki shoots Vinito twice. Beethoven backstabs Stiglitz. Mata Hari shoots Wiki. Stiglitz turns and shoots Beethoven four times in the body and Edgar Wallace in the heart, killing both. Wiki heart shots Mata Hari. Eric kills Stiglitz with a double-barreled shotgun. Wiki headshots Eric. Wilhelm blindly shoots Wiki and Matilda with his MP40. After waiting outside the tavern and being informed by the incident, Rain and several bastards approach and stand off with Wilhelm. After Wilhelm surrenders to the bastards, Bridget takes Hickox's weapon and kills him with four rounds. The wounded Bridget surrenders to Rain and the bastards. Later, Rain aggressively questions Bridget at an animal clinic where he takes her for bullet wound treatment. He pokes her wound to make her recount the tavern incident in Operation Kino. Rain continues the cinema operation. Rain chooses Donowitz and Omar Almer, Omar Doom, to deploy suicide explosives and masquerade as Italian filmmakers escorting Bridget. Bridget will say she broke her leg mountain climbing to explain her cast. Colonel Landa, now an SD officer, investigates the French pub massacre and finds one of Bridget von Hammersmark's shoes and an autographed napkin she signed for Wilhelm's son, recognizing she was there and may have been wounded. He also identifies the bodies of the two German-born bastards, who were known to ambush teens as German soldiers. Chapter 5, Giant Face Revenge The following evening, Landa approaches Bridget and Rain in the cinema lobby and quickly sees through their disguises because Rain, Donowitz, and Ulmer cannot speak Italian or German. Rain is most obvious since he is speaking it with a thick southern accent. He asks Bridget alone to try on the sneaker he got at the tavern. Fits perfectly. He strangles her and arrests Rain. Rain discovers Private Udovich, B. J. Novak, has been captured and is in the truck with him as he is hauled away. Landa betrays. He informs Rain and Udovich in a closed restaurant that four senior Nazi officials must be killed to end the awful war immediately. They're at nation's pride, and he'll let the assassination continue. A fee. He will not help end the war to be tried by a Jewish tribunal for war crimes and executed. He wants to negotiate a deal that Rain cannot authorize but his commanding commander, Harvey Keitel, can to stop the conflict. Landa has his radio operator help Rain reach his general, where he states his terms, full military pension and benefits under his rank, the Congressional Medal of Honor for everyone participating in the operation, American citizenship, and a residence on Nantucket Island. He also admits that he planted Rain's explosives in Hitler's box at the cinema, seen in flashback, making three attempts on Hitler's life, Donowitz and Omar in the main theater, the explosives in Hitler's box, and Shoshana's plot. Rain is put on the radio by his general, who tells him that Landa and his radio operator will drive him and Yudovich in a vehicle to American lines and surrender, then Rain will drive the truck back to base and debrief Landa and the operator. Shoshana and her helper and lover Marcel, Jackie Ito, are working the projection booth at Nation's Pride when he tells her it's time. In a flashback, Marcel films Shosana's English speech. They then compel a local camera shop owner to develop the film by threatening to kill him and his family if he doesn't, and Shosana cuts the entire film on the fourth and final film reel and leaves it in the projection booth to run when the moment is right. Marcel advises Shosana to lock the auditorium and hide behind the screen in the present. Danowitz and Omar Ulmer, the two bastards left behind, leave their seats and proceed upstairs to the balcony as Marcel approaches the theater. 
intended to kill Hitler alone, unaware of Rain's capture or Shosanna's intention to burn the cinema with everyone inside. Donowitz watches the two guards guarding Hitler's opera box entry from the nearest bathroom. Shosanna inserts the doctored fourth reel of Nation's Pride into the projector camera as Marcel locks the auditorium doors, sliding the safety locks at the tops and bottoms into place, and then pushing a hefty iron crowbar through the door handles to further bar them. He steps behind the screen where Shosanna stored her complete stack of flammable nitrate film. Shosanna pulls a lever to switch the projector to the doctored reel on a film cue symbol. Marcel waits, smoking behind the screen. Solar, uneasy with the film's portrayal of him killing Americans, leaves the theater and flirts with Shosanna in the projectionist's room. She advises him to go, concerned about his intrusion. However, the spurned Zoller storms in and aggressively confronts Shosanna about her behavior of him, informing her that she can no longer insult him. She begs Zoller to lock the door, hinting that we don't have much time. When he turns his back, she removes a small revolver from her purse and shoots him in the back, mortally wounding him. She quickly checks the auditorium to make sure she wasn't heard. Zoller groans, and she understands he's alive. She rolls him over in pity, and he shoots her before dying. Donowitz and Ulmer are also planning an opera box guard attack. Donowitz impersonates a waitress serving champagne. They kill both guards and grab their machine guns in a successful ambush. Hitler enjoys watching Zoller kill many American soldiers by himself in the movie. But his elation is short-lived when Shosanna's fourth real alterations answer Zoller's movie question, who wants to send a message to Germany. Shosanna's huge visage emerges on screen and she tells the audience, in strongly accented English for the first and only time in the movie, that they're all going to die and she's a Jew ready to take revenge. Marcel lights his cigarette in the nitrate film behind the screen on her cue. The auditorium erupts when the fire breaks through the screen. Danowitz and Ulmer then entered Hitler's box and shot him, Goebbels, his assistant and French translator Francesca Mondino, Julie Dreyfus, and the other Nazi officials. Danowitz and Ulmer shoot randomly into the throng below while the cinema burns, but the auditorium doors are shut and barred. Finally, Landa's explosives in Hitler's box and the bastard's legs explode. The cinema burns down, killing everyone inside. As part of his bargain with Rain's commanding officer, Landa and his radio operator traveled with Rain and Yudovich to the American lines in Normandy the following day. He surrenders his gun and sword to Rain at the American lines. Rain tells Yudovich to handcuff Landa, then shoots and scalps the driver. Rain says that while he appreciates Landa's underhanded deal and all the perks he secured for himself, he is incensed that Landa planned to take off his SS uniform and blend in with the American population, with no one remembering his Nazi crimes. Rain will fix that. Rain carves a swastika into Landa's forehead and tells Yudovich it may be his masterpiece to end the film. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this episode of our channel. Goodbye until next episode.